Ah, guys, I've got to be honest with you all, I just can't get enough folklore. Give me all of it, every utterance from the depths of ancient history. In fact, I think I'm maybe addicted to the many mysteries of myth and legend that have proliferated their way across our earth for time untold, forging this rich abundance of captivating culture from the four corners of this planet that we can just stare in awe at of all of its interlocking parts. Culture is a puzzle or a painting with many layers, and as we chip our way beneath the surface, key themes seem to emerge. Perhaps the most important theme of them all is place, an ancient kingdom, a long forgotten city, or a cave deep in the bowels of the earth. Let's see what's left lurking. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the Top 5 Mysterious Places in Folklore, Part 2. Roll the clip. Notorious! Bruce! Oh, boars, Russ, either way. Russ, Russ, and all the Russ. For the curious amongst you though, that scene in particular was from 2004's King Arthur, starring Clive Owen in the titular role of Arthurian legend. But whatever you think about that movie aside, it also portrayed an incredibly intriguing angle as to the true identity of King Arthur, instead of the Britonic hero of legend, a Sarmatian warrior put into service by the Roman Empire as a legionnaire. Hey, I'm not saying it's correct, but I'm saying it's interesting. And who knows, maybe Artorius will make a little appearance in this video. Anyway, let's begin. Kicking off at number five, Agatha. And whilst being a close nominee to our friendly resident top five scary witch, Agatha, who is on hiatus at the moment and will return when she so well pleases, this particular entry, although close in subject matter, is a completely different sort of esotericism. You see, for hundreds of years, particularly following the emergence of the occult renaissance in the late 19th century, Western theology and philosophy had a habit of taking fragments of cultures from ancient times and places and adding them to their own. This one, Agatha, is an amalgamation of all of those things. Also known as Agati or Agarath, Agatha is a legendary kingdom said to be located deep within the Earth's core, and in the field of esotericism, it is a name widely associated with the belief of a hollow Earth. Now, although the veracity of that particular belief is, well, full of holes, excuse the pun, its impact on the folklore of the Western world throughout the 18th and 19th century is pretty staggering. The hollow Earth belief is most often associated with the 17th century astronomer Edmund Haley, and was built upon the esoteric beliefs left behind in Greek, Celtic and Hindu mythologies, amongst many others of an ancient subterranean cave system that leads to a long forgotten civilization. In the 19th century, a prolific French occultist by the name of Alexandre Saint-Yves d'Alvider published the first reliable account of Agatha in European society. And by reliable, well, that means his methods were otherwise undisclosed. Nevertheless though, according to him, the secret long forgotten world of Agatha, along with all of its wisdom and wealth, would be accessible for all of mankind when Christianity finally lived up to the commandments which were once drafted by Moses. He would later elaborate by stating Agatha could only be accessed once the anarchy of human civilization was replaced by the synarchy of the harmonious rule, a belief of cooperation that was proliferated by a secret elite throughout mid-century France, Italy, China, Mexico and Hong Kong. In other instances, Agatha is commonly associated or confused, depending on your stance, with Shambhala, otherwise referred to as Shangri-La. And because of this, in general, theosophists regard the Agatha of legend as a vast underground complex of caves beneath Tibet. In that regard, I guess the search continues. The Kingdom of Saguenay. And as so far as the colonization of North America is concerned, this tale is a remarkable example of the time. It's also just straight up awesome and it's living proof of the influence that oral tradition can have given which perspective it comes from. The Kingdom of Saguenay, as legend tells it, reportedly has its origins in an ancient Iroquoian legend and was recorded by the French colonists during the colonization of North America throughout the 16th and 17th centuries. Now the purpose of this legend may well have been a cunning one laid out for the native Iroquois to give the French pause, but as they told it, the Kingdom of Saguenay was a land far to the northern regions of Canada, a vast and capable kingdom of blonde men rich with golden furs. Now, the legendary explorer Jacques Cartier first described finding what he referred to as the Saguenay River on his second voyage to the north in 1536. He was accompanied by a number of Chief Donna Connor's sons who told him of the kingdom. They claimed to him that the Kingdom of Saguenay was rich 
rich with great mines of silver and gold, and yet the French explorers that followed their directions searched in vain. Now, in hindsight, it is most likely that the Kingdom of Saguenay was either entirely mythical or instead an Iroquoian attempt to trick and confuse the French. However, there are some that have since speculated that the Kingdom of Saguenay was an ancient pre Columbian settlement, most often referred to as Lance ou Meadows, a place which we've spoken about regularly here at Top 5 Scary Videos. Now, do with that information as you will, but also note that the kingdom is also regularly associated with the legendary settlement of Nuremberga, meaning quiet place between the rapids in the spoken Algonquian languages. Both of these refer to an ancient kingdom of pillars of gold where the inhabitants carried quartz of pearl atop their heads. Now, whilst none of this is for certain, thanks to its place in folklore, it certainly still raises quite a few questions. Next up at number three, Gorias, Phineas, Murias, and Phalias. And whilst we're technically cheating by putting four places of myth and legend into one single point in this regard, we definitely can't be having any of them without the other. Also, this particular entry is just awesome, so yeah, there's that too. Now, if you know anything about the mythological cycle of Ireland or the most iconic mythological races found in their literature, the Tuatha de Danann, then you'll also know that there are four incredibly important treasures often associated with its core belief. Otherwise known as the four treasures of the Tuatha de Danann, allegedly bought by the Tuatha de Danann from their four island cities of Murias, Phalias, Gorias, and Findias. Together, these four treasures form perhaps the most important objects in Ireland's mythology. The Stone of Fal, the Spear of Lug, the Sword of Nuada, and the Cauldron of Dagda. And if that sounds like some recipe for the most badass figure in all of mythology and folklore, then I suppose it is. And if you could find each and every one of them by travelling to these four mythical islands, then I'm pretty sure you'd become pretty capable indeed. As the Libor Gabala describes, the Tuatha de Danann resided in the northern islands of the world, where during their early days as a people, they were instructed in the arts of magic before finally moving in dark clouds to what is now Connacht in Ireland. They carried with them from their four beautiful cities on four beautiful islands, Gorias in the east, Phineas in the south, Murias in the west, and Phalias in the north. The Tuatha de Danann were said to have lived for a time untold on each of their islands, embracing these magical arts, druidry, knowledge, prophecy, and magic. Each of these islands were said to have had their own patron poet, otherwise known as a Fili, who was an enlightened figure remarkably skilled in the occult arts. What is most intriguing though is that the four islands are most often associated with a place known as Lachlan, which in the tongue of many Gaelic languages refers to Scandinavia, or more specifically, Norway. And as an awesome side note, the four magical objects are also widely associated with the ancient Welsh legend of the 13 treasures of the island of Britain. And if you're looking for a tall tale that will stir your spirit and sense of adventure, just take a look at that because it's brilliant. Coming in at number two, Scholomance. And yes, for the World of Warcraft fans amongst you, I did just say Scholomance, as in yes, it's a real place, in folklore and fable anyway. And much like the same Scholomance that exists in the western plaguelands of the eastern kingdoms of Azeroth, this particular school of black magic and the dark arts was particularly good at training young necromancers to do the devil's bidding. Of course, in legend, anyway. In this instance, though, Scholomance was a fabled school of black magic that resided in Transylvania for time forgotten, a place that was allegedly run by the devil himself in many Romanian folkloric accounts. As the legend tells it, throughout its history, the school enrolled about 10 students at a time to become the Solomonari, although only one of the 10 graduates would be chosen by the devil himself to become the Weathermaker, incredibly powerful wizards in Romanian folklore that ride dragons and control the weather, causing rainstorms, thunder and hail and all manners of things. As they say, the School of Scholomance itself lay deep underground, and the students which attended it remained confined deep within the bowels of the earth, unexposed to sunlight for the seven year duration of their study. Here they learned the language of all living things, the secrets of both nature and magic. They would speak to animals, weave spells and recount the entire knowledge of humanity into the book of the Solmonari. If they did that, then they were free to graduate as wizards of the world, powerful figures that would weave folklore for ages to come. Now, although it's entirely unclear where Scholomance truly resided in folklore legend, there are some estimations. Many accounts refer to Scholomance being south of Hermannstad, which is now known as the city of Sibiu in modern Romania. Oh, and also, of course, Scholomance was a stark inspiration for Bram Stoker himself in his Dracula novel, using the school of folklore legend as a basis for his castle Dracula deep within the Carpathian Mountains. Who knows, maybe one day you'll get an invitation to study there, if you're lucky. And finally, coming in at the number one spot, Avalon. 
Of course, because just as El Dorado made its way to the number one spot on our previous list, there are just some places in folklore legend that are so out of reach that it is human nature to endlessly long for their existence. Take for example Avalon, perhaps the most legendary and important place in Arthurian legend, the Isle of Apple Trees, the place where King Arthur's sword of Excalibur was forged and then later tragically where Arthur himself was taken to recover from his wounds following the Battle of Camlan and his showdown of epic proportions against Mordred. The name itself first appeared in recorded history in Geoffrey of Monmouth's History of the Kings of Britain and the details that follow it are more illuminating than you may expect actually. In fact Avalon in literature is far more associated with the magic and mysticism of a different kind. As Monmouth penned Avalon was ruled over by Morgan Le Fay, the powerful enchantress of Arthurian legend as the chief of her nine sisters. Morino, Mazo, Glitton, Glittonea, Glitton, Tirono, Thitton and Thitton. As Monmouth described voyaging to Avalon quite a lengthy journey by sea, but it was worth it considering the bounty that awaited you. The island of apples, Avalon or the fortunate isle in its latin tongue derived its name from the fact that it produces all things by itself. As the legend tells it, its fields have no need for the plows of farmers as nature provides in abundance. The island produces grain and grapes and the apple trees of the wood grow tall from the close clipped grass. Those that live there have lived there for a hundred years or more and the nine sisters rule it by a pleasing set of rules. In this legend, the otherwise duplicitous Morgan Le Fay is instead a remarkable figure rather than the evil seen in later literature and she rules Avalon as a place that the ladies live and know all of the magic in the world. In some instances to shield Avalon from conquering eyes, she covered the island in an all encompassing mist where it is said to have existed in secrecy ever since. Perhaps most interestingly though is Avalon's historical connection to Glastonbury Tor, a place which in ancient Britain was a high hill surrounded by fenland and marsh which is said to have been often shrouded in mist and ruled over by a noblewoman named Morgan who sheltered King Arthur following the bloodthirsty battle of Camlan. Folklore eh? Isn't it the best? Well there we have it guys, our list for the top 5 mysterious places in folklore part 2. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Or do you have any more to add to this list? Then please let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video, though, if you'd like to carry on with your top five scary binge, then please take a look at our playlist neatly compiled for your viewing enjoyment. Put your feet up and enjoy, in other words, because I just love folklore. Anyway, on that note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just top five scary videos in particular, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy. <laughs>